The tension between African indigenous spirituality on the one hand and religion on the other hand is an age-old contention. Making sense of this is author and academic Dr. Matole Mochecha who speaks to us now. Dr. Matole Mochecha has published a book to this effect. Dr. Mochecha, thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. Are African indigenous spirituality and religion irreconcilable to the extent that you have to choose one over the other and they cannot at all times coexist? The book was not published by me. This is a book published by uh, Imboni uh, Jace uh, Hade. And the book was launched at uh, UNISA yesterday. And I was invited as one of the panelists. Uh, the, what comes out is that uh, it is no longer a choice between uh, African spirituality and uh, other spiritualities. The simple truth is that uh, the West was given 2,000 years uh, to run the world. And for that 2,000 years, they used uh, violence, wars, and so on. And they uh, also abused religion. Uh, for political purposes. Now, uh, their 2,000 years has expired. And uh, that expiry is actually uh, marked by the war in the Middle East. So that, for us, means the death or demise of uh, secular religions which they were imposed on the world. Now, from 1994 to the year 2994 is what we can define as an African millennium. That millennium will be governed by African spirituality. So the launch of the book by Imboni Hadebe was historic because uh, it launches uh, the African millennium. Yeah. It's interesting that you mentioned there that part of the imperial conquest arsenal has been religion as a tool. Religion is ubiquitous in African life. It is almost uh, inextricable in African life in most senses, given that church has become a place of community for us, but also church has become a place of organizing and in our own liberation struggle, a place to organize for the purposes of liberation. When we talk about the contentions between religion and African indigenous spirituality, is there enough scholarship out there that makes sense of the adaptation of religion into uh, African indigenous spirituality and how they today coexist uh, co cohesively in African life? You will uh, understand that uh, when our people embarked in uh, the struggle, the first phase of that struggle was to say was to break away from missionary religions and uh, uh, established in what are called in African initiated churches, uh, predominantly the Ethiopian movement, and our people made a clear distinction between what they called Inkons or Zem Teto, which were colonial religions or missionary religions, and Inkons or Zemo. So what we are saying is that uh, for 2,000 years, Inkons or Zem Teto were dominant, and now they have turned out to support violence, wars, and now Inkons or Zemo are rising because uh, you know one old lady called uh, Nehanda said when she was hanged in 1896 by the Rhodesian forces that uh, uh, the bones will uh, arise I will come back to lead the liberation struggle and the struggle in Zimbabwe was led by that lady called uh, Nehanda and uh, the struggle was called uh, Chimurenga.
which means uh, the war of the ancestors. And that war of the ancestors uh, was then uh, led by the spiritual uh, 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 people. So all that we are saying is that uh, in Konzo Zemoya now have uh, their time and uh, our people should listen to the voice of their ancestors. Yeah, Ethiopia is a very interesting case study then you brought it up. So I, I wanted to double click in on that. Is there a textural difference between how Africans in Ethiopia, a country never having been colonized, relate to religion and spirituality versus the rest of the continent that had been victims and subjects of conquest? You see, what is generally not understood when we say Ethiopia was never colonized, the modern Ethiopia is Abyssinia. Uh, the uh, Semitic people from Yemen, Arabia, conquered the Kushites, who were indigenous Africans, and then destroyed ancient Ethiopia with his, its headquarters in Meroe. So it is not entirely historically true that Ethiopia was not uh, uh, colonized. Ethiopia, Abyssinia, which was a, a province of uh, ancient Ethiopia, also known as Nubia, was colonized by uh, Arabs and Semitic people from Arabia and Yemen. And then they established a, a Semitic uh, a kingdom of uh, which came to be known as the kingdom of Haile Selassie. And that's why the kingdom of Haile Selassie uh, you know, link themselves, King Solomon, who is Jew, they don't link themselves to Africa. But uh, historically, they supported the African struggles, and that's why uh, African leaders identify with the Abyssinia, which is modern Ethiopia. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Mutsera, thank you so much for your time this evening. Dr. Matole Mutsera, an author and academic.